is wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've heard it said that you don't need many heroes if you choose your heroes wisely. And two of mine, just recognize, Jackie Goldberg has been one of my heroes for years, and Sheila Kuehl, who is not only my law school classmate, but we were in the same section of law school together. So the incredibly kind introduction from Jackie means so very much to me. I did some research before coming here, and I realized that I last was asked to speak at a fax dinner on October 6, 2001. It was a time of great hope. But five months earlier, I had argued the Andrade case in the Ninth Circuit. And you remember, Leandro Andrade was a man who had been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole for 50 years for stealing $153 with the videotapes from Kmart stores in San Bernardino, California. I thought that this was the ideal case to challenge the use of the three strikes law for non-serious, non-violent third offenses. Andrade himself had never committed a violent crime. He had committed some burglaries a number of years before of unoccupied residences. Had his prior offenses been rape and murder, his maximum sentence under California law would have been three years in prison. But because his prior offenses were burglary of unoccupied residences, property crimes, he could receive the inhumane, cruel, unusual sentence of 50 years to life. And when I spoke at the fax dinner over at the Radisson Hotel by the airport on October 6, 2001, I was convinced that I was going to win in the Ninth Circuit and that this was going to open the door for many of you, for your loved ones, to be able to have their sentences ended to be released. Almost exactly a month after I spoke to you, the Ninth Circuit ruled in favor of Andrade. I've been a lawyer now, well, Sheila, we graduated almost 31 years ago. And I've argued over 100 appeals. I've won some other cases, but no victory ever meant more to me than the Ninth Circuit's decision on Andrade's behalf. And then, within a couple of months, the Ninth Circuit ruled in favor of two other three strikers, Ernest Bray and Richard Brown. And the Ninth Circuit said that even if individuals' prior offenses were violent crimes, still life in prison for shoplifting was cruel and unusual punishment. I was dismayed when the Attorney General of California, Bill Lockyer, sought Supreme Court review in the Andrade case. Nothing in California law required him to do so. Nonetheless, he did seek review. In the beginning of April 2002, the Supreme Court granted review in Andrade's case. And also, you'll remember, granted review in a case involving a man by Gary Ewing. His offense was stealing three golf clubs worth $1,200 from a pro shop. I confess I didn't know that golf clubs could be worth that much until I read the facts of the Ewing case. And both of these cases were argued in early November of 2002. And from the time of the oral argument to the moment the decisions came down in March of 2003, I was convinced that we were going to win. How could a court that believes in justice uphold a sentence of life in prison with no possibility of parole for 50 years for stealing $150 with the videotapes. I remember dropping my son off at the bus. He was taking a bus. He went up to public school up in the valley and getting a phone call from a reporter telling me that the Supreme Court had decided Ewing and Andrade five to four holding that it was not cruel and unusual punishment to sentence people to life in prison for shoplifting. You'll remember Justice O'Connor wrote both of those opinions, joined by Chief Justice Rehnquist, Justice Scalia, Justice Kennedy, and Justice Thomas. I've never felt more devastated by any case. Because the reality is, if Andrade's sentence isn't cruel and unusual punishment, what sentence will be? 
immediately then fax mobilized to get an initiative on the ballot in November of 2004. And you'll remember that the original polling could not have been more favorable. It showed by a two to one margin, California voters would agree that there should not be life sentences for non-serious, non-violent offenses. And the initiative that was on the ballot would have made it retroactive. So everyone who was serving a third strike for a non-serious, non-violent crime would be able to be released. Even going into the weekend before the election, it looked like the initiative would pass. And then the governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, went on a blitz of speaking engagements and advertisements where he said that this initiative would lead to murderers and rapists being released. As you know, this was just lies. The entire campaign against the initiative was a lie. By this time, I was living in North Carolina, and I remember hearing on election day in November of 2004 that Kerry was going to win and that the initiative to reform three strikes was going to prevail. By the time I went to bed that night, it was clear that George W. Bush was going to be reelected. But still, I had hoped that something good would come from that dismal day, that the initiative would pass. It lost by a very close margin. So as I speak to you tonight, seven and a half years after I first talked to you, the question really is, what now? I don't think there's going to be much hope from the courts for the foreseeable future. I don't want to say no hope. There are some glimmers of hope. In December of 2008, as I'm sure you know, the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit handed down the decision Gonzalez versus Duncan. This involved an individual who was sentenced to 28 years to life for not registering his current address as a sex offender within five days of his birthday. And the Ninth Circuit ruled it was cruel and unusual punishment to sentence him to 28 to life for this very minor offense. The opinion was written by Jay Bybee, and that's quite significant. Jay Bybee is one of the most conservative judges on the Ninth Circuit. He's probably most famous for being the co-author of the torture memos with John Yoo. And if Jay Bybee is willing to recognize this as cruel and unusual punishment, it does open the door to some others for serving life sentence under the three strikes law for being able to get relief.